I am extremely hype, yet simultaneously apprehensive going into this chapter right now. And I I'm going to talk about why before we actually dive in and get into the live reaction. Now, it's not just the fact that this is the base feeling that I have every time. I read a Tokyo Ghoul chapter. It's not just the fact that this is in fact Bay Ishida's weekly dose of unabashed hype and heart-wrenching tragedy. It's not just that. It's not even the fact that last chapter, with that ending, that finger crack showcasing that my boy Kaneki is about to go in like an utter savage. Okay, it's not just that we got insight into the flashback and the formation of the persona that was Sasaki Heisei. It's not just that the cochlear raid and, and the events on Rue Island are going to be utter insanity. It's not even just that. And I'm going to say this right now. It was a little bit salty at first. But I got spoiled. Just a tad bit. I got spoiled to the events of this chapter. And I, I, I was just salty because I don't like to know a single thing that's going to happen. Because it dilutes the live reactions. It really does. But then I really sat on it. And it wasn't anything major. And then as I really started to think about it. And look at the page. It just got me hype. Yet simultaneously scared. Because here's the thing. Somebody sent me yesterday. A page from the Raws. And on this page. It showcased my boy Hide man. Yo. He, like, like seeing it instantly, I was like, God damn it, somebody showed me. Like, I, I just didn't want to see anything. I was like, fuck, fuck, why am, why am I seeing this right now? It's, it's, it's spoiling me. But when I looked at it upon closer inspection, it really looked to be, there was no, it was the Raws, so I couldn't read the dialogue. And it looked to be, you know, a depiction flashing back to when Hide encountered Kaneki when he was heading down Route V14 and about to confront Harima. And all it has me thinking right now, it has me so fucking intrigued. I need to get in this chapter because those of you who have been following my Tokyo Ghoul reviews from the jump, from the very beginning, or you've been here for quite some time, you know that Hide is one of my favorite characters in the series. I, I didn't expect to get anything regarding Hide this soon, especially just seeing my boy Amon, because all I've been asking for throughout Reed for the longest is seeing Amon again and getting a definitive conclusion as far as Hide is concerned, whether he's still alive, which... Everybody knows I'm a heavy proponent of Hide still being alive, and, and all the slew of theories that go with it, okay? So, I, I will always rest my heart on that, I, but whether that's the case, or whether he is in fact dead and he sacrificed himself for his friend. The thing about seeing this flashback here, and it also strikes me as odd because it looked to be Kaneki reminiscing about it, and the thing about it is, does that mean that we're going to see Centipede in this chapter? Because a lot of us have speculated that that particular memory was locked away in the centipede persona, and he has yet to recall it. But with the coalescing of the personas, with this kind of pseudo-true Kaneki that we have in front of us, despite the fragility that is still there, despite the facade that he's putting up right now, because of the pain, because of the conflicting emotions, and, you know, the, the, the influx of memories... It's, it's either we see Centipede in this chapter as he's going and he probably confronts Arima or something. I'm just speculating right now. We're, we're going to dive in and find out for ourselves. Or this memory was not exclusive to Centipede and he has coalesced with the, the, the Centipede persona as well. Which is a whole other thing. But aside from that, man, why is he remembering this here? Are you telling me that Hide returns in this chapter? I don't even know right now, but I, I overall, I want to say this right now before I start. Please, in the future, don't... Like, I, I know people are hype when the, the chapter drops and everybody's like, the, the chapter's crazy. I always get all these tweets and stuff like that. I love that. I absolutely do. But please don't give me spoilers, though, because I don't want to know anything so I can just dive in with the live reaction. But that aside, Tokyo Gory Chapter 68. Let's, let, let's fucking get into the chapter, man. I'm ready to go right now, man. I've been waiting... Every time the chapter comes out, because, and I don't know what manga stream is on right now, I really don't, but Helvetica has been doing it. Personally, the translations for, from Helvetica, they're okay, they're, they're, they're acceptable. I know there's some issues with them, you know, in certain portions, but overall, they're, they're pretty good translations, so I'm fine reading it. I would prefer manga stream. I miss the days of Imperial Scans, but I really do. But that aside, you know, I, I can't wait past the 24-hour threshold. Like, I need to get into it, so we're just going to dive in. And, of course, you you already know I got the glasses right here. So, let's get into the chapter. Page 1. What's the title of this? Custody of the S-Class. Oh, it's you. 
please don't glare at me with such eyes, Sensei. You might just leave a scar. It's irritating to talk to you. What do you want? It's time for you to eat. I've brought you your meal, dude. Furuta. You know he's still salty, man. You know he's still... Like, he's so warped, man. Oh, my God. Shiono-san. He has been a magnificent editor. Awaiting the publication of Beleg the King, the editorial department barely was able to cover up the content. Of course, the cover-up won't be strange if it's about the negation of the CCG or Washu. Wait, 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 wait. Barely was able to cover up the content. But you're telling me they were trying to censor Bleg, regardless. I heard that they are still trying to further s the spread of the book in every way possible. Interesting. Was he killed? Furuta. <laughs> Viola. I have turned him into a pate. I have also added some seasoning. I hope you don't mind. Look at his face, what a fucking fiend. Since I am a man, my cuisine skills are lacking, but if you would so kindly eat this meal, I would be honored. Don't be. Ah, oh, the alarm's going off. My, my, this is a problem. Was this a mistake? Have they found out? That's your reaction to it? Don't tell me you know what's going on. Don't tell me you, you anticipated this, Furuta. Yo. The ultimate fucking wild card, man. No lie. This man, I, I can't put my finger on him regardless. All right, then. I'll be on my way. Ah, one last thing. Were the results of your wiretapping successful? Yo, look at that! Look at that fucking smirk! What an ass- you're telling me he knew? He knew the whole time. Which, if that's the case, it doesn't surprise me. That's the thing, I'm not surprised in the slightest. This man has had his fingers in everything from the jump. I will keep this secret from the authorities. It was solely out of personal interest. Furuta! Oh well, I wish you the best. As if it matters, no one is going to see. I don't know if it's the translation, or if it's just the way that Furuta is speaking, but his dialogue is, is completely veiled to me as far as his intent and, what, and how much he knows about the situation, because he hears the alarms go off. And he's just like, my my, this is a problem. Was this a mistake? Have they found out? I can't believe, I can't believe she, oh no, dude, turned into a fucking pate. Damn. And see, oh my god. You can feel this kind of, of somber nature exuding from Eto in this panel for sure. And I don't think, here's the, here's the thing, when I said it last week when I, when I saw that smirk on her face, I really think that any sort of, of annoyance or sadness that Eto is feeling right here and, and that the, her physicality is depicting is rooted in the fact that she genuinely feels bad about Shiono's death. She genuinely feels bad about her editor's death. That's the only thing I think of. I don't think that anything aside from Shiono being turned into this pate that he slid in front of her is affecting her. I don't think that she's surprised that he knew about the wiretapping and that they recorded the conversation and that Kaneki he now knows. And I think that things are still going generally according to her plan. I don't think Furuta's phased her in that way. If he has, that's even crazier. But and that's the thing. I wouldn't be surprised even still. The fact that he knew about that fucking grin, man. We'll have to see. We'll have to see, man. Yo, she on dude. Warden, what's going on? See, that's the thing. And now he's in here all alert and shit. Like, I can't tell. If this is him playing the fool, just straight Adachi levels going in, or if he's generally surprised as to the events that are unfolding, and it was just a translation, we'll have to see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to bounce this off of the the manga stream translation when it finally comes out. The cells have been opened. 
Sectors 0 through 1 have been compromised. That's where ghouls Ray A and Below are being kept. Then how did this... Like, look at his face! He looks genuinely perturbed by the situation. And fucking high Saki, man. What a fiend. I know, I, I still 100% believe that he, that he has connections to Algidi, so I don't, I, I don't even want to feel as though he's genuinely concerned about this issue right now. The surveillance cameras have picked up the cause. It's him. <laughs> Yo! Looking at, look at that profile on the security footage. He looks like an absolute savage. Sasaki, did he? From the security office on the second floor. In the end, it's probably because he thinks like a ghoul. He still thinks like a ghoul. Alert all guards. Capture the one who opened the cells, Heisei Sasaki. I repeat, capture Heisei Sasaki. Look at him just strolling through opening cells. Yo, the man is heading straight for Hinami. I, 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 we all knew it to be true, man. But to see him finally resolving himself to do it, to see, just, just finally after the events that transpire at the end of you know the Sukiyama extermination arc, finally peering into this man's soul, hundred percent. It started with that smile he showed to Urie, but, yo, I, I, I love this character so much. The complexity, the depth, and at the same time, you know, the tragedy surrounding him. This kind of sacrificial complex that he has where he bears the weight of everything on his shoulders it's insane to me but at the same time especially if the, if, if we don't see centipede as a separate entity right now that means that that the outlet that was centipede for that sadism and for the insanity that was tr you know transpiring in him due to to you know cannibalizing ghouls and everything like that if that's been absorbed into his base persona, that plus the resentment for his mother, said, I, I could go on all day. We, I, I, I need to stop being sidetracked right now. Let's get into the action, son. The ceiling is. There were more intruders. Move out. Yo, why would you let the access card just open up the roof like that? <sighs> Ayato and Bancho's group are coming in, dude. Let's go. It's the rabbit. What do we do first? What about the prisoner cells? Is it Algiri? I don't know, but we must fight back. Capture him. The rabbit uses an ukaku. If we suppress him from the front, we won't have any problem. Yo. Ayuto. <sighs> Clean son. That's the thing, the man's skills have only progressed at this stage. Fucking boss, look at that maneuver. Stay to the sides if possible so we can avoid the attacks from above. Ayato, why did the signs go off before we broke in? I don't know, but there's someone opening the prisoner cells. I absolutely must take this opportunity. Yo. Shit, my gun. Look at that stance. Look at my boy's face. Oh my god, Kaneki, what a savage. And that's the thing. It doesn't even look like he's harming them at all. He's straight up moving them out of his path and disarming them and, and, and fucking up their weapons. That's it. Yeah. And I don't think he can bring himself to do so. I, I really think that his emotions are still heavily conflicted despite having resolved himself and knowing what his priorities truly are. He's still not going to be trying to hurt this stage. Only Cochlea employees know where the ghouls are locked. Where are you? Faster, faster, before he comes back. Sting, sting. Shit, this timing. Yo! Do you guys see this? So, so wait, 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 here's the thing too, here's the thing, especially, we haven't really talked about it, although I, I did briefly talk about it with the chapter with Rishashi versus Arima, and we found out about this whole thing with Arima's eyes, and the theory is rooted in the fact that he's losing his vision, particularly in the right eye, but the comparisons with Kaneki and them being the two experiencing this, the, the comparisons across the board, but seeing this right here, it's been a while since we've seen Kaneki get one of these headaches. 
and, and feel this thing in pain and, and his eyesight, seeing that kind of tunnel vision right there. Yo, I still really want to know what this is rooted in. Whether it has something to do with his 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 composition in general, if it has to do with his eyes being pierced by Ixa and everything that happened with him clawing out his eyes and everything like that, or if it is in fact you know that continuing the link between him and Arima, like I said prior, what is 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 the overall meaning of it, dude? Is she then just weaving these things, and especially since his memories are quite sound now, we can't even kind of correlate it to that anymore. It's it's wholly rooted in the eyesight. Third floor. Banjo, I'm leaving this place to you. Okay. The second floor. Is she locked deeper within? Yo, Narukami! Ayato, son! I'm sorry! Arima, he knows too, man! Which is interesting to me. It doesn't seem as though he's seen him yet. This man saved him from the blast. Has Arima, has Ayato ever confronted Arima before to know about, about Narukami? Sorry, I was busy helping the others. Who is this, who is this one random operative in Banjo's, in Banjo's group, man? What numbers on his mask? Oh my fucking god, Papa. The presence. Like, you see something that, like this and you're just like, you, I, I fucked up. It's, it's done. Kisho Arima. Number 33. Okay. I'm really interested in the talent that Banjo has surrounded himself with, though. The fact that this man was able to scoop him up and save him from the Narukami Blast. The two of them against Arima is, is, is done, though. It's a mute point. There's no fucking way. That they can they can scratch him. Even if even if Kaneki teams up with Ayato against Arima, I still think granted 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 Kaneki probably has the best chance. Here it is. And and no no centipede. This is just straight up his his own reminiscence. Kaneki, I Kaneki. Can can I just pause for a second? I, 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 even though it's a flashback, seeing Hide for the first time in, in, it's been over a year since I've seen Hide anew. We, we, we've never seen Hide in me. I want to save you. Please eat me. Yo. Damn. See, here's the thing. This, this has always been rooted in speculation as to what truly happened. Don't tell me we're going to get confirmation as to what really happened. Hide, what are you saying? What lies ahead is a very dangerous man. From this, there is no escape. You know, after you lose, you could die. That's why. You must show him you are worth keeping alive. Can you, with all your strength, fight one last time? See, that's the only line that we really got from beforehand. Damn, no way, don't tell me. Hide, I want to be just like you. Inami. No, 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 no. No fucking way, dude. No, 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 no. no. Like, let, let's think about this rationally. Let's. You can't, you. No, no. I refuse. I refuse to believe it. I mean, if it's true, if that was the end of. Hide, I want to be just like you, Hinami. Oh my god. God damn. 
Actually, let me keep these on. Seeing my girl's face, seeing these tears. Just that, that, that faint whimper of an Onichan. She had completely given up hope. You can see it in her eyes. And the shock she sees of the man standing before her right now. As it's refilled. For someone else's sake. Sorry I'm late. Let's get out of here. And look at that expression. So you, you can tell it, it's kind of, of tepid and troubled. But at the same time, 100% genuine. And you can see a faint hint of just of joy that, that is really being stifled by the fact that he knows what he's about to do. I would lay down my life. Now is that moment. Inami, I mean, here's the thing right now. That last page, just seeing Inami's face like this just wrecked the shit out of me. It, it really did, because everybody knows my girl, but... I want to focus on right now, before we talk about anything else, let, let me, let, let, let's go into this heat day shit right here, because... There's still no confirmation 100%, and I think that heavily what this is implying, and even, even with, with Kaneki's dialogue... He doesn't a hundred percent. It doesn't really give us that definitive end that yes, he ate he day before the confrontation. We know that he ate. We know it for a fact because when he regained consciousness in that moment before confronting Arima, he could taste the blood on our, on his lips. It was still fresh. Still doesn't debunk the initial theory of him consuming a portion of he day. Okay, it it still does not destroy that from what I've seen right here. This, to me, only builds up the mystery even more, okay? Because here's the thing, and, and, and I want to delve into right now, I take the time to delve into, because seeing this, now that my curiosity has been satiated, it, it pushes things forward in both ways. It can push things to a definitive conclusion of that, yes, we just need to fucking man up, accept it, and finally shed those tears. Hide is dead. He made the ultimate sacrifice for his, you know, for his best friend. And that makes him all the more of a genuine human being, of the, of the character that I wholeheartedly respect and love. Okay, but what if it's not that simple? I'm still going to hold on to my beliefs that Hide is still alive. I'm not going to let this debunk until we get complete, definitive, like, like we see it. Haneke states it, okay, and it's done. I'm not going to let it, because the, the theories concerning Hide's actions in re thus far if it is in fact him people equating hide to being scarecrow which now that we've seen bonjo we can't 100 percent say that bonjo is not scarecrow but now that we've seen bonjo and there's no definitive tie there it could be placed on somebody else and hide is probably the biggest you know proponent and, and person placed there as far as theories concerning scarecrow goes outside of bonjo so i mean it could still be somebody else entirely but there's that then we also have to think about, unless it was, unless it was Eto herself, which we can, especially with potential ties between Kaneki and Eto spanning further back, or just Eto's infatuation spanning further back than even the inception of Kaneki becoming, you know, who he has been throughout the entirety of Part 1 and, and, and Re, then it could be debunked there. But still, there's no explanation for the Hangman's MacGuffin being sent to Kaneki. And during, during the Christmas party and everything like that, alongside the mask, which we know that was from Uta, but the book, I still 100% believe it's from Hide. And, and the thing, the thing about it is, we have to question the truth about Hide, and, and and it's been brought up a lot. I'm gonna have to talk about it at length soon enough. But there's that. There's the Scarecrow theories. I I really can't say that 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 Hide is not. And, and let's let's look at this. Yet again, I want to save you. Look at this panel, because I noticed it straight away when I was looking at the Raws. And it's the same thing that we, we kind of saw from a different angle in the original in instance that, uh, that this occurred. He seems to be doing that cork that he has, where he scratches the side of his face. 
And similar, as, as many people have pointed out, delving into these theories and tracking the instances, you know, if you want more insight into it, Chibi has a video particular on this trait that you can go into if you haven't heard of this yet. But here's the thing. If this is in line with, you know, Kaneki's little quirk of touching his chin when he's ultimately lying, and Hide is in line with that, you know, kind of spurring the whole discussion of shade surrounding Hide, etc., etc., which I actually really like those theories. I absolutely love them. It just changes the spectrum of the character 100%. And my I, my admiration for Hide will transform into something else entirely, but I don't think I'll stop loving the character. It's just going to be this kind of... I don't even know if it, it'll be more so curiosity or infatuation, but regardless, I can't see myself if the shade is confirmed around Hide, if he is in fact alive, that I'm going to despise the character. But it, it really depends on how fiendish he could potentially get. But I don't, I don't see it. Like, I just can't feel that sense from it, man. But the "I want to save you" line being uttered in, in, in you know, in just position with this kind of quirk that he has could imply some falsehood b behind it. Please eat me. That's the thing. Even even if he did consume a portion of him, then we have to question how he they survived that. If potentially, you know, he was then used and became a floppy or, you know, a legitimate half ghoul, which I really don't see those kinds of progressions, but it very well could be the case if he just somehow, you know, survived outside of that. Here's the thing that really gets me. We already knew about Hide's grand deductive prowess. That's one of the things that made me fall in love with the character in the first place. But we already, we already knew about that. The thing that gets me here is what he says about Arima. What lies ahead is a very dangerous man. From this, there is no escape. You know, after you lose, you could die. He, he knew the man would lose against Arima. He knew the man was positioned there. We all knew that he knew what was upcoming. He was like, when you can, can you fight one last time with all your strength? The fact that Hide's knowledge of Arima's mentality, and not just that, what the higher-ups of the CCG would say to the idea of keeping Kaneki alive and utilizing him as a tool. The fact that he was able to judge all of that showcases a, a deeper understanding than even I thought he had prior of Arima, of the hierarchy of the CCG, and kind of works in line with the theories of, you know, Hide potentially being a Washu, Hide having ties to V, or Hide being the, the assistant that Kano spoke about, which people like to say now that, that the Furuta revelations have come to light, that Furuta is in fact the, the assistant that Kano was talking about. I don't think that that makes it 100%, even with the whole Kano's clown reference, the fact that he was tipping him off left and right, the one that was initially getting him all of his, and I, I guess realistically, if you think about it in that way, with the fact that he was the one that initially set everything up for, for Kano to be brought in with him and, and implanted with Reese's Kako to begin with, you could see, you could put it off as that, but... What if it's still Hide? What, what if Hide has ties in that light? Regardless, man, I can't give up on the idea that my boy is alive. I, I really can't. But here's the thing. If he is in fact, and I think Ishida wants us to kind of feel as though he's pushing that, that kind of path a little bit more with this flashback and with Kaneki's resolve, the fact that he says he wants to be just like Hide, giving up his life for somebody else's. But he says, I would lay down my life it's not as though that definitely translates to you know that, that is showcasing that he day as well would lay down his life not that he did but nah, I, I don't know man i i really have to sit and think about this for quite some time man damn it hurts especially thinking about the fact that he genuinely is dead if, if that's the thing and i've said it since the very beginning since that chapter when i reviewed it that if he day is in fact dead and he made that sacrifice, and Kaneki consumed him, then that, that makes him the, the ultimate friend. Just, just done. It, it solidifies his character as someone wholeheartedly that, that, that I just love and respect. But if there is shade concerning if he is in fact alive, and there's two ways it can go if he is in fact alive as well. It could still be maintained that he genuinely cares about Kaneki, and there is no shade whatsoever. And then the only question I have then is why is he keeping his distance? I mean, the fact that, you know, we, we still don't even know who Toko was visiting in the hospital that one time. When I think about that, 
when I think about the hangman McGuffin that was sent to him. Just 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 things of that nature make me a little little person. And the fact that we still have characters lurking like Scarecrow that we don't have an identity to pin on. But if we can see Amon, okay, if we can see Amon even with and everybody believed in that as well. That's the thing. Most people believed in that, similar to the people that believe in Hida. I know that after this chapter, there's going to be a good portion of the people that believed Hida were alive, and they're going to be like, fuck it, we're not going to believe in this anymore. I still want to. I'm still going to. I can, I'm not ready to give up my boy yet. Unless I get 100% definitive proof that he's gone, I, I'm, I'm still going to believe in it. So that's as far as that's concerned. Chapter as a whole, though. Fucking yeast, man. The Furuta ex Eto dialogue to be in Shiono, man. And then I'm really curious to see how this is going to play out. I feel as though we're going to cut to Rue Island, and we're not going to progress as far as this concern for a little bit, like the, the the next chapter at the very least. But Ayato going up against Arima is, is not going to work out. Even if Kaneki meets him. Like, I could see Kaneki meeting up with him, tra- handing off Hinami, and trying to hold Arima off himself because he's resolved himself to make that sacrifice. So that could ve- very well be the, the way it goes. I see Amon having some hand in, in the events that unfold here. And the weirdest thing to me is that we, we're seeing complete fodder. What wasn't, you know, um, Kyoko Ara and, and Mogen supposed to be staffed and, and stationed at Kokli as well? Like, where I would have expected to see, you know, Ayato go up against one of them as opposed to just straight out of the gate. Arima standing in the man's way. I don't know who this mask number 33 on Bonjo's Bonjo's ghouls seem to have some skills, man. They really do. Speaking of Bonjo's ghouls, I just looked into this after the video, so I want to insert this here. But looking at some of the things people are saying about this number 86, the, the, the mask ghoul in Bonjo's unit that has number 86. We saw him, I believe it was a couple chapters back, where they were talking about Beleg the King. And he was like, I believe that anybody, anyone that could actually read this would be moved. And people are saying that that as well could be potentially be eaten. That's what people are trying to do to kind of rectify this instance. I, you already know, as soon as this was over, I had to go out and, and, and look into what people are saying about this. But that's, a, that's an interesting thought process. People saying that his dialect and his dialogue very much is in line with he days and no other character in the series really speaks that way. I, I, I could see it. I could really see it. I mean, any avenue that allots for Hide being alive, even if that means he's steeped in shade and that he's not the man that we thought he was. I, I don't care. I really don't care because I just ask him. Like either, and that's the thing, that's what's so great about how this character is positioned is that no matter which way Ishida wants to take it, it will make for an incredible character and at that, a character that has a heavy impact on the events of the series regardless. Now, Mon's gonna have to come in here at some point. Like, that, that's, that's the only way I can see, you know, Kaneki actually making out of, of a confrontation with Arima, barring, you know, something happening with, with Arima's weakness, his eyesight, and, and something transpiring there. We may very well see Centipede back if he has to push himself to conquer to form, but I'm really curious to see how these events play out, man. I, I, I can't put my finger on any one thing. Rue Island is probably the only thing that I can see the events unfolding very clearly. That's probably the only thing aside from Mitsuki. Mitsuki and Torso is really the only wild card over there that I have no idea how that's going to factor into what goes down. But that aside, I can see the matchups happening on Rue. I can see the deaths happening on Rue. It's just going to go along that line. But with what's happening at Kogyo right now, I have no idea how things are going to unfold. I, I don't see foresee us escaping you know escaping this situation without some sort of tragedy taking place, but as long as my uh, no no lie as long as my girl Hinami makes it out of here I'll be okay in all honesty, and I, I really don't see Kaneki dying here I really don't I mean if he, he, I wouldn't put anything past Ishida but really unless th- this really is the climax of the entirety of the series which some people are saying that this this in fact is I still think we have more plot points lingering that we really need to get to before the rest of it. Even though there's been a heavy push in revelations in the last 10 chapters, I still think we have a, a, a bit longer to go. So I don't see the man dying here, but I also don't see him getting, you know, coming out clean out of a fight with Arima. It's just it's not possible. So we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts on this chapter, and I'm out. Peace.